The GTA and Red Dead movies that could have been. The creator of Elden Ring says he sucks at games and how Donkey Kong nearly had an even better mistranslated name. I'm Ash Dixon and this is Jinx News. Few franchises have the absolute mass appeal and praise of GTA and Red Dead. And lucky for Rockstar, they own both. And while we haven't had a new game from either franchise in quite some time, it turns out both had plenty of opportunities to be adapted into a movie. And in an age where The Last of Us and Fallout are among the best shows on TV and where the Super Mario movie rakes in over a billion dollars, it might seem like the movies would have been a no-brainer. And according to Rockstar co-founder Dan Hauser, conversations were happening. The huge success of GTA, of course, attracted Hollywood execs who wanted a slice of the pie. But the problem was, that's clearly all they cared about. He said, we'd ask, why would we do this? And their response would be, because you get to make a movie. And we'd be like, no, what you've described is you making a movie and us having no control and taking a huge risk that we're going to end up paying for with something that belongs to us. And it seems these execs thought Rockstar would be dazzled by the Hollywood lights without considering the fact that GTA was a multi-billion dollar IP that most movie franchises would be envious of. Plus, this was back when game adaptations had an awful reputation, back when the Far Cry movie was a thing. Oh, you don't remember the Far Cry movie? Well, allow me to breathe new life into this godforsaken movie that everyone rightly forgot about. <laughs> Bring it to the present day though, and Dan Hauser has left Rockstar, and the movie landscape is very much different, so maybe now's the time. Would you love a gritty Red Dead Western or a GTA crime thriller, or are the game's spectacles enough as they are? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments. If you saw Monday's episode of Jinx News or even had a go at the game yourself, you'll know just how difficult Shadow of the Erd Tree is. In an interview with The Guardian, the game's creator, Hidetaka Miyazaki, claims that he sucks at video games. Now, according to Jinx News' half-Japanese producer, Hello. he probably said it a lot more politely in Japanese and some cheeky translator has embellished the phrasing a little bit, but the context remains. He doesn't consider himself to be a good gamer, which might be what the DLC needed. As Miyazaki went on to say that to prepare for Shadow of the Erd Tree, he would use everything at his disposal, all the assistance, all the aid, and also all the knowledge that he had as the architect of the game. And I think that was the problem with people complaining about the difficulty. A lot of gamers have these self-inflicted limitations because their egos are too fragile to beat the game with any method other than the hardest way possible. Luckily, it seems a lot of people have swallowed their pride and the Steam reviews for Shadow of the Earth Tree have returned to mostly positive, plus it's now sold over 5 million copies. Miyazaki did also say that he doesn't plan to play it anymore because he'd find things that would bug him. But hey, if that means he'll spend that time I'm working on the next FromSoft game, that's all good with us. Maybe you'll also have time to check out our Patreon. Jinx Plus is currently a seven day free trial, meaning you can check out the boatload of content for absolutely nothing. Let's take a moment to chat about the name of everyone's favorite gaming gorilla. Donkey Kong. Now, before we get into it, I do just want to quickly dispel a little urban legend because a lot of people say that he was meant to be called Monkey Kong, but due to a translation slip up, he became Donkey Kong. But that ain't true. Reality is, Miyamoto thought the word donkey was a close synonym to stubborn, as donkeys can be stubborn in real life. Obviously, no native English speaker would ever think that, but hey ho, a gaming legend is born. But that's not the full story. Did you know Donkey Kong was very nearly called Kong Dong? That's right. Kong Dong. We know due to some resurfaced documents from Nintendo's lawsuit with Universal back in 1983. At the time, Universal claimed that Nintendo based DK's name after King Kong, who they held the rights to. Well, they lost and incidentally, decades on, the two companies are now the best of friends. And it's from those documents that we have a list of potential names for Donkey Kong. And you know, some of them are pretty sensible, like Mr. Kong. He does wear a tie after all. Others are pretty funny. No, literally, one is Funny Kong. While others are just brilliant, like Jack Kong. Here's the full list for you to enjoy. But yeah, I think we can all agree that Kong Dong is easily the best. Plus, it's the same initials, just swapped around. And just imagine how good the DK rap 
would have been. KD, he's Kong Dong. He's the leader of the bunch, and he's so big. Every sexual prospect's got gorilla grip. His coconut gun can fire in spurts. That's an OG lyric, but it still works. He's bigger, faster, and longer too. He's got the Kong is done in the whole Kong crew. Moving swiftly on, it's time for the quick fire round. And sadly, we haven't finished off Donkey Kong just yet. Turns out the Switch remaster of Donkey Kong Country Returns will retail for $60. $60 for a remaster of a Wii game from 2010. Now, I know some YouTubers like Video Game Donkey will praise Donkey Kong games to the moon and back, but even he'd say that this price is wrong. $150. But hey, Nintendo are also charging $60 for Luigi's Mansion 2 HD, a game originally on the 3DS. Next up, Dead Rising is getting a deluxe remaster. I had a blast mowing down zombies on that thing back in 2006, but then again, I was 10, so who knows if it would be fun now. Should I have been playing that game? Probably not. But considering this is the generation that grew up with the most cursed era of the internet, Dead Rising was probably pretty tame in comparison. No release date yet on that one. And last up, Kaisenat has managed to beat Shadow of the Earth Tree after nearly 100 hours. Yeah! He'd been raw dogging that thing since launch and things were looking good when 50 hours in, he reached the last boss. But this is Elden Ring and Elden Ring is pain because it took him basically the same amount of time to beat that final boss. Shout out to the therapist he brought onto stream to help him on his journey. And that's the show. Like and subscribe. Keep an eye out for a very, very important announcement on Monday and have a wonderful weekend.